Today we're going to do things a little bit different. I wanted to uh, take you for a walk out in the pumpkin patch here, kind of show you where we're at. We did not do a duplicate planting video like we did last year. Um, I guess that's been one of the things that I don't want to do on this channel is, is make a bunch of duplicate videos um, just a year later doing the same thing. So I'm trying to do um, some things a little bit differently to kind of show you, show you something new in every video. We're out here in the same field that we did our pumpkin patch in last year. We sort of reconfigured where the garden part, garden portion of our patch would be. Um, we did a lot of our sales right here behind me in front of the silo and a lot of the customers would pull up. So we've sort of moved the garden a little bit closer, um, hoping to have a little trail cut through here for some of our customers to do a little photo op. My wife has several rows of sunflowers planted here. Um, we've tried to place the tallest sunflowers here on the back. If the sunflowers are the tallest, then we stepped it down to some field corn or cow corn. It's some Northrop King that I got from the feed mill. Um, I've got a few rows of that. And then we've also got some several rows of the decorative uh, bicolor um, sweet corn. And then there's some other versions, varieties, um, which you'll have to wait to see for. Um, and then there's also some, some flowers there. And then we've got the peppers and tomatoes and some cucumbers and things. But the main, the main star of the show is the pumpkins. And we did this, we did it this year, um, pretty much the same as last year. So if you watched our pumpkin planting video last year, you can see how we do it. We mark out the rows, we pace them out. Um, we then uh, hand deposit some cow manure for fertilizer in those specific spots that we're gonna plant. Then we have hills made. And then the planting of course goes in with four seeds per hill. And then the spacing appropriate for cultivating. And uh, this year with all the sports and the weather, um, it was hot, then it was cold, then it was hot, then it was cold, then it was some rain. And then, like I said, with the sporting events, we did sporadic uh, different timed planting. So we've got some plants like this one here. Um, obviously, you can see the weeds. But, uh, you know, some of the plants are doing excellent. That's a little bit, that's about an average size right now. Um, I don't know, six inches tall. Um, all four, All four plants are coming up on this hill. And there, we have we have found some of the hills that are are missing, and so we've gone back and reseeded. So some of those are, you know, you're not going to see here, but um, you can see that the pigweeds are doing great anywhere where I uh, doused it heavy with cow manure, um, like clockwork, the pigweeds come up. So I've already come through here and cultivated once. Um, we've had several days of rain, so it's still a little bit wet. And uh, once it dries up, we've got another couple days of rain coming. So um, these weeds are going to get a little bit bigger before I can knock them down with the field cultivator or the quack digger is what I will use. Um, the first time through, I just used the spring tooth drag and uh, it, it did a, a fairly decent job. But uh, I think there's enough here that I want to hit it with the field cultivator. So... I want to show you another couple of these plants. Obviously, um, we've gone through and picked picked weeds, hand-picked weeds, you know, in the immediate area around the plants. We've walked the rows. It's just the near to the plants that we've got to get with the cultivator. So um, the first four or six rows were planted long before the rest of these. So a large portion of the pumpkin patch is still in just in this phase where they're um, maybe two or three inch plants. But with the rain coming, they'll certainly catch up. In different areas of the pumpkin patch where, I, where apparently the, the cow manure wasn't as heavy or it was just that we planted later and I had gone through and dragged the field right before planting, um, there's far less weeds. Um, mini warts anyways we've got several varieties that we planted this year we kind of paid attention to what was a big seller last year and uh 
we're obviously going to uh, plant the pumpkins that, that we found our customers wanted and uh, we were able to sell quite a few of. So I'm not going to go through the list. I would say there's at least 20 varieties in here along with uh, a few varieties of gourds and, uh, and then the decorative corn. Um, you can see all of these are, are in the same, same stage, the, the three to four inch. Um, these are renegades. Um, we've chosen, uh, and I don't know that offhand, actually I, I probably could guess and butcher some of the names of the seed companies that we've used. Um, we used several that were local, some from the feed mill, some from Escanaba, and then some uh, several varieties that came from different seed companies, seed catalogs that my wife is, uh, is a fan of. And uh, when I'm sure of that, I'll mention that in the videos. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to do a quick video tonight, guys, kind of give you an update. Like I said, there's a couple more days of rain. Um, and then our next videos are probably going to be making hay. We've got two two grassier fields that I want to hit first to take care of uh, several grassy hay, uh, horse hay customers. And then we're going to, as weather permits, move on. As you know, that's going to play into the 4th of July holiday. So, um, ooh, that sounds like a miniature pig screaming. If you've ever heard a miniature pig get picked up, you know that sound. Anyways, um, the, the, the so far the weather apps that I'm using, and you've, if you're gonna plan to make hay, you have to have several weather apps. Um, we've got the Weather Channel. I just downloaded or, or got the NOAA weather app. Um, there's always the standard one that comes on your phones. And then of course, being close to, the biggest city that we are close to is Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, I usually check the weather uh, out of that news channel from Green Bay. Their radar seems to be pretty accurate with what's coming across the western sky um, when they check the, the radar and their, their like five-day forecast. So anyways, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Saturday being the 3rd of July, looks like our three-day window. So we're going to get cutting on Thursday, hopefully. And uh, we've got, like I said, two grassier fields near the farm here. And then actually the next field is a fairly large one. Uh, well, that was an extreme close-up, sorry about that. And uh, that'll probably be the next one, a fairly large field out in Schaefer. Um, you can see on this portion of the field, there are hardly any weeds. And like I said, I didn't blanket this section of the field with cow manure. We isolated the piles. Um, I basically put two two spade shovels worth of cow manure per per mound and it was basically a five step spacing which is a little over 10 feet to the next plant which will allow for that eight foot eight foot quack digger cultivator to uh to come through here without disturbing once they start to vine so that was my thought process behind that um and after um after the heat and after the sporting events, baseball, all, uh, you know, my three oldest kids were in baseball this year, softball. And uh, I don't see that going away. I think they did a great job and I was really proud of them in their sports. And uh, I don't see that going away. So we need to streamline the, the pumpkin planting process. So I've watched several videos and uh, next year will be the first year that we just you know, use a, use a planter. I've got a few ideas. And uh, when I get it put together, I'll certainly show you that. But the basic concept is it's a corn planter, um, either with larger plates for the pumpkin seeds, or it's like an air, an air seeder. Uh, basically a one row is what I'm looking at modifying from, uh, we've got a couple old corn planters here that I can use the, um, a lot of the apparatus is from to uh, fabricate my own pumpkin cedar. And, uh, and if I think of it, I'll link the video that I watched for my inspiration and then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about uh, or planning to build. Yeah, so now that the pumpkins are coming up, it's cons conservation mode. It's uh, protect the plants. We've already um, taken, 
action as far as the cucumber beetle, um, the weeds, and of course the deer are the biggest ones between the bugs and the deer. Uh, we're in uh, full on conservation mode. I don't like seeing these deer tracks right across. Uh, I know my parents have their dog tied up near their garden. He's on patrol at night or just his presence usually keeps the deer away. Uh, but when I wake up early to go to work, he's sound asleep and the deer are 100 feet away um, nibbling off the tops of corn. And so my parents have a beautiful uh, vegetable garden every year with sweet corn and, and uh, potatoes and all the vegetables. And it would only take one really aggressive deer one night to destroy all of that. And uh, they do, they usually will leave the pumpkin plants alone until they start producing flowers and fruit. And then it's open season on pumpkins. So uh, last year we were able to get some crop damage permits. And I guess I plan to do that again this year. And uh, what we did was donate those deer to the local food bank and to friends and family and coworkers. Um, I was able to drop it off at one of the local processing plants in Escanaba and then um, put down the person's name, donate it to them. They pay the processing and that way that deer is not wasted, but uh, utilized by somebody who, you know, who needs it. So enough rambling, enough jibber jabber. Um, so folks, I hope you, uh, I hope you stuck around for the full 14 minute video here. I think I may have to edit out a few parts there. Um, so I almost did an edit free video for you tonight. I want to thank you for checking it out. I apologize if you tuned in hoping for music. Um, we'll get back to some of that. Like I said, when we get to our hay in videos, thanks for checking us out tonight, guys. We'll catch you later.